Do you remember Middlesbrough away? You remember it with me? You're the only I, player that's come to punch me at the end of a game ever in my life. I, I put it in there, I went, <laughs> move! I remember shouting and to I, it, and I you just, went, you went, I, I, I just snapped, I completely <laughs> lost it. We were actually driving up to Old Trafford to do the press conference, to sign, and a phone rang. I always remember, if you didn't score, that was a problem, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was bugging me on a personal level. I shouldn't have said this at the time. You can see his footsteps <laughs> approaching. <laughs> Your head's like that. My head is gone. <laughs> and then the shoes stop. And then he said, how long does it take you to shoot? And it went out quickly to the press. And I was in this hotel room and the paparazzi were there outside the room and getting pictures. And I was like closing the curtains. And I'm like, what the freak is <laughs> happening to me now? Coming towards the end at Manchester United, what were your feelings? Well, I'm on the way to the training ground of PSV Eindhoven and I think you'll have probably guessed already to meet a former teammate of mine, a Manchester United legend adored by Reds all over the world and that's Ruud van Nistelrooy. Now he's managing a football team and you've got to look after 25 players, 15, 20 staff. You've got the rest of the club that's looking up at you, you've got the fan base. You've always got to think about the wider and bigger picture and Ruud wasn't that as a player. Ruud was clinical, brutal brilliant as a striker but I want to know how he's transferred those skills that he had as a football player which were very much individualistic into now looking after the collective and thinking about the wider and bigger picture of obviously a football team and he's also the only man at the end of a football match who went to punch me. Rude, I'm coming to see you. Good to see you, mate. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. I, good to see you. You too? You're looking unbelievable, eh? What, what do you want to do? Do you want to go for a, we'll go for a walk? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and we'll then go come ahead. back in? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Right, Rude. I want to start at the very beginning. Growing yeah. up in Holland and the biggest influences on your life, hmm. your parents and what your upbringing was like. Just take us back there, can yeah. you? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's nice to talk about it, actually. Just a uh, working class family. Yeah. My dad, a plumber. A plumber? A plumber, yeah and he was an, uh, an, an amateur coach in the evenings. And uh, my mom, a typical, at the time, a housewife, yes. a home, taking care of my brother and me and my sister. Yeah, great, great uh, childhood, I, I remember that. I always think of Dutch players coming through these elite academies mm. where they have this incredible training programme, <laughs> these unbelievable technical and tactical yeah. awareness. But you had a very different journey. You started very much at sort of grassroots and in a lower yeah. football. Yeah, amateur sides, but playing with older. I yeah. was uh, 12, playing with 16, 17 year olds because I was quite talented. So it's not like from seven, eight years old, like our kids here now. Yeah. They get into the best programs with all, everything fantastically sorted out. And I started in playing in, outside in the streets and, yeah. and then uh, with older lads, basically. Uh, that, that, that formed me in that way. Do you think, do you think that non-conventional journey probably meant that you were mentally stronger because of it? Yeah, just, just found my way through because I, I wanted to reach something. And I think it got me into this intuitive player. Yeah. Instead of the, the formed player. Yeah. I just, you know, the way instinct. I played was just instinct and, and go and play. And I always sort of dreamt that, that you, you want to reach something. But it took a long time, 15 years, to be scouted yeah. by, a, I'm, I'm, uh, by a professional team. So yeah. Who spotted you? <sighs> what, what, what was that moment? That phone call or no, that, that, that letter? Door? It was a letter, a letter like from who? In, invitation from uh, FC Den Bosch, uh, head of academy for an invitation for a test game, yeah. a friendly, where <laughs> like a trial, you know, a bunch of, a trial yeah. where a bunch of lads get a chance to play a game. And I was like, that was the moment where it's like, <laughs> this is my ticket. Yeah. And uh, now I've got a chance. And that game, I remember very well. Yeah. I played well and I got in. Yeah. That, were you, that were you a midfield player back Yeah, in? all my, my childhood. How were you a midfield player? <laughs> yeah, you cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. As a midfield player, you have to pass to other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah. But I, I really got into this, yeah. this striker mode. When was that? I think at PSV. So before that, you're playing as Always a midfield, midfield player. Also as a professional. Bosch, at and Heerenveen also. 
Wait, what, what kind of midfield play? Give, give me yeah, a, a ten, like uh, off the front. Yeah, off. yeah, off, off the off the nine. Off the nine. Yeah, yeah, runs and running in behind, getting in the box, scoring goals, and then running back and defending. Yeah, also a little bit. Yeah, you defended. <laughs> Oh, I got into this. We need to get these videos. I, know, I need to get these videos. You cannot imagine, eh? <laughs> you cannot imagine, yeah. Sometimes I got a little bit too, too much out of the striker. <laughs> you just said two things there. You said running back and then running into the channels and running wide. I think that's yeah. not really. Because yeah. at Manchester United, when you came, you loved being in between the two centre backs. Yeah. Your movements were always so clever. Yeah. How did you develop from that player in those early years? It was a yeah. midfield player, number 10, hmm. to be in that sort of what would be one of the greatest strikers that Manchester United have ever had? I don't know. It's, the, it's also the instinct. I think yeah. as, a, as a midfield player, I don't think I would have made it into the level of, of United and, and yeah. performed there. And I just adapted into a player where I felt I can, here I can be a difference. Yeah. I don't think naturally that that was sort of me, maybe, but I just wanted to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. So my qualities at that level, I had to adapt in a way, yeah. in in in, a, in also in a mindset that was maybe a little bit unnatural yeah. to me. But to, to what to be a striker? Yeah, and and to be able to be so fixed in in scoring. Yeah. That was quite narrow, I think. Yeah. In that sense, I was. That wasn't particularly me, I, I think, but I didn't care because I wanted to succeed and, and, and I got into that that type of player. Yeah. yeah. And Aaron Vini started to score goals. Was that where yeah, the chain... Who, which, who was the coach that said... The coach there, he, he, he said, yeah. you need to go up front. Yeah, he said, you, you, can, uh, you can be a nine. Who was the said, coach at that time? Yeah, he's, he's called uh, Fopa de Haan. It's a, it's a very... He was all his life in Heerenveen and he's yeah. a very famous coach in Holland. and. But he said, you can be a nine. I said, a nine? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm, I'm a ten. I'm a midfield player. And he said, no, I learned to play with the back to goal and be in offside positions. And then he, he really started working with yeah. me. And he's, he's he, yeah, he, he did exercises and coaching and, and video. And he made me watch other games and go and watch strikers and develop yourself in that. He almost like reprogrammed yeah. your yeah. mind, you reprogrammed yeah. your whole game. Yeah. And would he be yeah. the biggest influence in those early in years that, in terms in, of your career? In that sense, yeah, because he made that that transition that yeah. transition work, coached me through it and developed me through it, and I took actually a lot out of it for me now as a coach yeah. and as a as a as a trainer or as a coach of young lads. What's your moment that was the low point in your life so far? We were actually driving up to Old Trafford to do the press conference to sign, and a phone rang. Would you ever see a psychologist during your career? I actually did. Rude, we have this section on the overlap called failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Meaning that okay, if yeah. you fail, it's temporary. So. I always ask our guests on the overlap, what's your moment that was the low point in your life so far where you felt the most depressed, the most low, the most anxious feeling that you've had? Well, signing for United, I did the whole medical yeah. in, in Manchester. And uh, we were actually driving up to Old Trafford to do the press conference to sign. And a phone rang and he said, your knee is not right. You got to turn round, go back to the hotel. There's something wrong with the knee. You're not going to pass a medical. Who made that call to you? The orthopedic surgeon from, from United who yeah. did, who saw the MRI. Yeah. And it's like, what? <laughs> so, okay. So turn the, turn the car around. And actually I, I was I was seeing Old Trafford <laughs> there. In front of you? <laughs> In front of me. And then I got to this hotel. And it went out quickly to the press and I was just there and there were photographers and yeah. this and that and I was in this hotel room and the, the paparazzi were there outside the room and getting pictures and I was like closing the curtains and I'm like, yeah, what the freak is <laughs> happening to me now? Yeah, I'm, I'm in this movie and OK, we'll call you in an hour and yeah, confirmed. I cannot go through with the, with the transfer. So you got to go back to, to Eindhoven. 
here with the doctors, we kept on going with my training, yeah. and then I collapsed. Then I did, I did mess my whole knee up, and that was actually on Sky. Yeah, I remember. Sky was there, and yeah. I, I did an exercise with heading a ball and a turn, and it. Was it like, did you scream a little bit or shout? Yeah, or yeah I shouted. Yeah. I, I, I did my whole knee uh, at the time. So that. That might, when you're so close to something yeah. huge, where you worked your whole life for, and it's like, nah, this is not happening, and, and then you feel the lowest. Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. Did Sir Alex speak to you at the time? He did, yeah, yeah. And what yeah. did he say? Yeah, he called me and he says, okay, stay calm, and he, he kept phoning me. Well, Whilst you doing yeah. rehabilitation? Yeah. He said, how are you? you can, once you'll be a United player, this and that. He kept telling you you'd be He kept United telling player. me, but yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, of course, my knee is, in, is a mess. I'm, I just had surgery. He's being nice. But then I got back and playing, and he was there watching my first game at Ajax away. Okay. He, watched, he was in the stands. And I played four, five, or six games, and, and then he came in again for me. So, I mean, that, yeah. that is the story of a bruise where you, in the end, yeah. get, get stronger like and better. Off. Would you ever see a psychologist during your career where you had low moments, or did you always feel that you came I, out I, of yourself? I, I actually did. And I can recommend it to any young player who feels low, who feels anxiety, who feels doubt, who feels... Uh, because I was in doubt, can I play again? Yeah. And I, just speaking about it and, and on a professional level with yeah. someone, it, it really helped to clear my mind. Okay, this is the situation, this is what I, what I can do, that this yeah. is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And it got me back on track. And, and, and that's a great thing. A lot of young football players, but a lot of young people struggle sometimes because obviously some people can't get access to go and see hmm. a psychologist what sort of things did the psychologist say to you do you remember anything specifically that helped you that you use as a yeah. coping mechanism now well i think the first people you you reach out to is is, is your family and friends in, yeah. in these low moments and tell them also your yeah what what you're dealing with yeah because sometimes you maybe you're proud or not not do it and deal it with yourself yeah i think just sharing with it yeah. Sharing your feelings is, is a big thing in that, in that sense for me. And it's hard as a football player, particularly in a sort of male dominated environment where there's a lot of ego, you know, it's a masculine environment. It's hard to actually speak up and tell people that yeah. you feel that way as well. It is, it is, but I think it helps when you open up and you feel, hey, it's a relief. Yeah. That, that's the first uh, sign of, of, yeah. of re recovering, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, Rude, it took you some time to get to Manchester, but you finally arrived. What were your early impressions? Firstly, the city, actually, itself. Yeah, I, I loved every bit of it. I was happy to, to, to get there and uh, to get to know the city and, and the surroundings. We, we, we got to live in Bowden. That's a posh bit, that really. Posh you know. bit, Not yeah. Barry, it's I didn't know it. You it's Barry, Bowden, yeah. <laughs> I was doubting Barry and Bowden, but a uh, nice apartment there and, and uh, yeah. Just settled in quickly. Yeah. Started training, playing, and yeah, off to a flying start. Yeah. You lived next door to Dennis Law, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Did you used to speak to him a lot. Yeah. I went sometimes for a coffee. And you were talking about goals. Talking about uh, football goals. Uh, yeah, striker. Yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. I mean, none of us knew that at the time. I don't no, think. No, It's my neighbour. I just go have a coffee with my neighbour. Was he a big influence on you, telling you about you? Talk about goal scoring or talk about the game or? Because oh, Dennis, Dennis is quite private as well. He's isn't private. It? And I just, uh, I don't know, just had a coffee and and, and 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 just talk about anything. Yeah. It was always good, good to have a chat with him. Did you feel under pressure at the beginning with the price tag, the injury? Not a, nothing at all. You didn't feel any pressure. Nothing at all. Was that just your I conf felt, uh, yeah, I was, it was it may maybe with confidence, but also I, I was on a, such a low point the year before. Oh, okay. And I worked myself back, yeah. and I'm like, I'm here now. Yeah. I've got nothing to lose. I remember in one of your first training sessions, you scoring a goal with your right foot from just outside the box, which to be fair, you didn't score many goals outside the box no. in the game, but you struck <laughs> it, and I thought, you, you made an impression straight away. Everyone thought, ooh, you know, what a player he is. Mm. What were your first impressions of the group and the training sessions and the environment yeah in the dressing room it was loud you know it was like <laughs> and a lot of banter a lot of jokes a lot of uh, the a lot of things going on <laughs> obviously with with you and phil and nikki and scolzy yeah. keen bex yeah it felt like that yeah i was among 
the best players in, in Europe uh, at, at the time and I didn't feel any pressure that I had at PSV as maybe one of the main yeah. Yeah, stars or, or yeah. Uh, players. So that released the pressure for me as well. And what, in terms of the training sessions and the way in which Manchester United played football, how different was that for you in the beginning compared to what you've been yeah, used to in the, Holland? The pace, uh, I remember the, the, the sessions, the possessions we did or the small-sided games, the, the level of play. Of course, when, when Scholzi and Giggs started to play with Verona at the time, yeah. or yeah, it was the, the level was was really high and quick. Yeah. So so I remember that from from my first and also the Premiership, the pace and the yeah. the, the physicality, the aggressiveness, yeah. the referees who allow a lot. Yeah. It's like uh, I, I had this massive bang <laughs> with the header with the, and the centre backs, the size of them as well, and I, I, I never seen people like that so so big. I just got smashed from the back with a long ball, and it, yeah. and I'm like, this is not a foul. <laughs> I had a whiplash, more or less. So <laughs> that was the the first time and the last time that I had a, a header where I went straight on it. I just after that I went to the side yeah. and just got up from the side because to they protect yourself to protect myself yeah. because they're just slamming you from the back and it's no foul. Yeah. So that was strange in the beginning, but yeah, yeah you you adapt as well. When you first got there and, and you obviously came up against that aggressive play, was there ever a feeling that you didn't feel you could adapt, or did you feel no, I need to get used to it? Yeah, but what was good that I, I, I could make my runs in between players instead yeah. of being against players, yeah. especially the, with the physicality. And of course, with backs on the right, gigs on the left, yeah. skulls, and Veron playing a lot there, or even then with, with York, who, yeah. with Dwight, who was playing off the striker, they would feeding my runs in, yeah. everyone in his own way. Backs yeah. with his early, early long, long passing range, gigs with his dribbles and his balls yeah. where he could play me in. And Scolzi with anything he wanted. <laughs> yeah, from close or, or from f further away. Yeah, it was for me to make runs and getting into areas with these players around you, you can do a lot. When, when I talk to Scolzi about you, he says that you were the best striker that he played with at United. And I always remember Sir Alex, I, I remember a lot of times him coming in the dressing room, I don't know if you remember at half time and saying, we can't spot your runs, there's only skulls that sees your runs. Do you remember him saying things like that? Yeah, I do. Did you agree with him? Skulls, he had this eye and I knew he would see me. Because your runs were subtle sometimes, weren't they? They were like little darting runs and in also, between centre backs. And also runs where, where you run quite early because you run you know, I had to trust Scolzi's touch with my run. Yeah. And I knew his touch would be good. And then I'm, I would make my run. And if, if the touch then isn't good, and then yeah. you're maybe offside. Offside, yeah. So you're on the line, edge on of the On the line, yeah. edge of the line, trusting his touch, and then his pass. And yeah. Scolzi was, I don't know, we got this, yeah, this Te connection. Telepathy. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, in terms of your, your style of play, you talked to me before about being a number 10. But when you arrived at Manchester United, I just thought you were sort of a goal-scoring machine, a killer in front of goal. I, you'd completely adapted by that yeah, point. Yeah, I, I completely you? adapted. Yeah, by the time I just entered as this type of player. Yeah. To United. Talk to me about your relationship with the fans. The fans absolutely adored you, didn't they? I think it's, it was also the building up with the medical and yeah. failing, and then the arrival was there, yeah. and the goals came from yeah. the beginning, and it gives just a massive uh, a boost. Yeah. You know, that is extra lift, uplifting. And, and that relationship was, uh, yeah, was special, always. Do you remember Middlesbrough away? I put it in there, I went, move! I remember shouting to you, and, it, I, and I you, just, went, you went, you yeah, went, I, I just snapped, I completely <laughs> lost it. Coming towards the end at Manchester United, what were your feelings? Obviously, people always talk about the end with you, with Sir Alex, but what yeah. about the, you know, the relationship was incredible for those first few years. Yeah. Um, how, how did it impact you in terms of help you and mould your game? Yeah, I think he was, he was very special in, uh, in the consistency. You know, you, you're, you're preparing your, yourself to, to perform and not, not, a, not a season, but the next and the next and the next. And he, he always kept going on about <coughs> that. You know, you're, the great players do it for, for a yeah. longer time and, and, and 
perform and uh, I don't know. For me it was so motivational, inspirational, you know, the way he managed me, yeah. like, as a person. And I think he did that with, with, with everybody in a different way. Yeah. I think that made him so special. I don't know? remember ever him ever giving you the hair dryer. Did he ever come in and shout? He did? Yeah, yeah. Can you remember a time? Yeah, I can't but, remember. But you can you can see his footsteps <laughs> approaching. <laughs> Your head's like that. When the head is gone. <laughs> your head is down, and then you see the leather shoes <laughs> coming. Tick, tick. And then you're saying, "Please walk. Please go." Yeah, go to Giza. And then the <laughs> and then the shoes stop. <laughs> and then it's coming. I remember. I think it was at City. I had, I was played in, and I had a touch, and it took me a, a long time to shoot, and it got blocked. Okay. And then he said, how long does it take you to shoot after the touch? Something like that. Did you think when he first went crazy, maybe at halftime or at the end of the game, do you think, oh, this is different? Or did you? Yeah, this is different, yeah. But I don't know. I think it was good. Not, not it wasn't particularly nice, but he, deep down you knew he was right. Yeah. It wasn't a stupid uh, yeah. killing of a player. He, he, he's actually frustrated that there's more to you, actually. Yeah. Come on, man, just get your game right. Yeah. He did that with many players. Yeah. And he did it everywhere, in the dressing room, with everybody to hear. Yeah. And he did it with you, he did it with Keane, he did it with Bex, he yeah. did it with anyone. Yeah. Nobody was bigger than that. Yeah. And it's the performance of demanding the best of a player. You are better than that. Yeah. And that actually felt like, bloody hell, it's true. I got to step it up. And that's what you needed, I think, as a player, because when you, you score four games in a row, you know, you yeah. don't want to feel good about yourself, but you, you do a little yeah. bit, if it's one or two percent, you know? Yeah. And he, he just smelled it and he just smashed that. Yeah, yeah. But any complacency or anything. Yeah, yeah. I always remember, and I always, I tell me if I'm wrong, but if you didn't score, that was a problem, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big problem, wasn't it? Yeah. And we, we could win 3-1, yeah. and the goal scorers would be Keane, Scholes, and Beckham, and you come in the change room, everyone's happy, and then Rudy would just be over in the corner. Like, He's pissed off he's oh. not scored. It, Especially if I missed a... If you missed a chance. A chance. Bloody hell, how could I miss that? How could I miss that? <laughs> but you would be yeah. a little bit upset. I would, I would, yeah, I would. Could you tell the rest of us it's, sometimes would find it a little bit... Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> when I, 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 if I was managing that player yeah. that I was at the time, I would say something like, hey, come on, <laughs> get on with your life, mate. We won 3-1, you miss a bloody chance. <laughs> and yet if we drew 3-3, three, three, but you yeah, scored the hat trick and you got the hat match yeah, ball, you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we drew rude, we drew and you... Yeah, that's not good. No, that's not good. You were so single-minded. Yeah. I think selfish is wrong. You were single-minded. Mm. You had that incredibly, I think, good arrogance. It wasn't overconfidence. Mm. You had to score. It was your job. And if you didn't, yeah. you felt like you were, I don't yeah. know, let yourself down, maybe. Mm. We never saw it that way, obviously, because well, you scored that many goals. Yeah. But do you feel like your single-mindedness was a big part of your game, and particularly around that time you were at United? I think that, uh, that focus on scoring you could say it was a bit, a bit carried away with it. <laughs> if you look at it now, I mean, come on. How would you, the manager, look at Rudy? Yeah, I would. Right? I would talk to him. I would take him apart. <laughs> would take, you? Come, come and talk now. In a, like I would a... say that in a one v one. I was like, come on, what's happening here? I would do that. I think it would have been good for me. So Rude van Nistelrooy, the coach, wouldn't like Rude van Nistelrooy. No, the I player. wouldn't be. I wouldn't like to see a player happy scoring a hat trick and being three three. Do you remember Middlesbrough away? You remember it with me? You're the only I, player that's come to punch me at the end of a game ever in my life. Yeah, I do. You gave me a right bollocking at the, in, in, because you, and rightly so. And I played... Do you think I was right? Yeah, you were right. I didn't do a lot in that game. That's what you were going on about. I had but the ball, my, I had the ball at right back. And I didn't show. And I, I needed that. I needed that little yeah, movement yeah. for that. And I didn't. But I, I had a toe. Oh, you had, you had injury? No, no, I had an inflamed big toe. <laughs> Honestly, it was so red and swollen. So you couldn't move? I, took, I, could, I was on flip-flops traveling to Middlesbrough. It was Christmas or New yeah, Year. Yeah, yeah, it was cold as well. Something yeah. like that. And I got into my, sh my boot before yeah. the game. I couldn't move and, and I feel you... I'm sorry for you now. No, 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 don't fuck <laughs> So you were right. I, I, when you play, I, you got a show. I, I put it in there and I went, move! I remember shouting and to I, you, I and just, you went, you went, 
Yeah, yeah I, I just snapped. I completely <laughs> lost it. And I was uh, storming in a dressing room when I came up to you and some of the... I always remember, I, be, I got substituted. <laughs> I don't know if the manager, to be fair, got angry with me, but he substituted me. I went in the changing room at the end of the game. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I heard you shouting coming through yeah. the door. Yeah, yeah. And you like, I'm not... <laughs> yeah. I was like, God, Ruth really snapped. He's <laughs> yeah, snapped. snapped. And everyone I, jumped in between yeah, us. Yeah, in between and out of each other. But I also, I also look back at that in, with a principle of how you view football as well. Because you played in between the two centre backs, yeah. and when I think now of single strikers who were playing up front on their own, yeah. that's where I would want them to play. No. But I'd been so no, used to the channel channels. with no. the two strikers. Well, I, I, Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I'd been, of course. I'd been no, used to the style of play. The one, if 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 uh, like you, if a right back is in in trouble in the pressing, then you need to come over yeah. to the ball side. I, uh, when you need a striker, I feel, to, to I feel better about my shout. I feel better. I felt, no, no, I felt bad about this for like 15, right. 20 years. You're right because I, I didn't show, and I needed, uh, I needed to be there yeah. at the time for you. But it was, it was a, sh a hell of a trip that for me. <laughs> and you had a sore toe. I don't think the United fans are going to feel sorry. He's, no, you don't. Feel sorry got a sore toe. I got this, <laughs> and my boots were, my boots were. Uh, it's uh, horrible having a sore toe in a, a boot. Half a size too small. To, to really hit oh. it well, and the, the toe, I don't know, I, I shouldn't have made it. But I, I, what, what am I going to say? Gaff, I cannot play, my toe is sore. <laughs> I mean, I was afraid. Sir, boss, 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 my toe's a bit <laughs> sore, I can't play today. <laughs> Roy, Roy, but I'm, I'm Roy. sorry, yeah, my toe's a little oh, bit. Well, Roy with my hairband, remember that? <laughs> oh yeah, what, what, did he kill you? He killed me for four months. Because you put a headband on. Remember that when I came, I had this yeah, long the hair with the bloody did, hand. You did. And I put it for training, and I went in the dressing room to the mirrors there with the. Oh, you used to put it. And I put the headband. And, it up. and he was like, <laughs> yeah, every day <laughs> for three months. I actually had enough of it, and I cut my hair. <laughs> I really did it. I was like, get out of the way. I thought, okay, one month, and I, I I'm not going to cut my hair for this guy. <laughs> Two months, but every day for two months. <laughs> and then after three months, I just... I'm I taking my hair band off. <laughs> so, coming towards the end at Manchester United, what were your feelings? Because people talk about the Ronaldo situation a lot, yeah. don't they? Yeah. But I was frustrated at the time. Because if you remember, I was used to playing with David. Yeah. And it was telepathy. We knew exactly what he was going to yeah. do. And then Cristiano came and it was different. It was, yeah. Because he was running everywhere, he would yeah. dribble, he would be mm. unpredictable. Did you feel frustration at that time because the delivery wasn't coming? Or did you feel, was it, was it Cristiano? Or was it just a general nah. frustration with different things, you think? I don't, I don't think so, because it got a bit out of, out of hand with that situation. I think the way we, we are, you know, in, in, in a relationship, Cristiano and I. Your mentality is fine yeah. now, eh? yeah, in general. Course, yeah. It's been really blown up. Yeah, as yeah. A, I mean, uh, yeah, I was there was, talking an incident, to there was an incident in training one day, wasn't there, where you were both going yeah, to each other? Yeah, it was a, uh, like, uh, yeah an argument in training and it, it, that's the story. But in the end, we, we, we figured it out together yeah. and we moved on and the relationship is, is, yeah. is perfect. Yeah. But it was a, a transition moment in the, in the team in the, in the with club. younger guys. Yeah. Rooney came, Ronaldo came as young, promising yeah. guys and it needed some time to adjust. And, uh, and I, I would also talk to me now if I would be the co coaching. What about being more? Yeah, I was like, okay, this is a the young a, a transition moment. Yeah. Uh, you need to have patience with yeah. these young guys. They will be. But we didn't have patience. None of us had patience. No, we though. didn't have patience. No. None of us had patience. No. The manager did, to be fair and, to him. And, and it was not only that for me. I was also, I don't know. I felt like five years, nearly five years, yeah, and playing in the Premier League. I don't know. I, I felt like the time was coming. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I did. Was that League Cup moment the big moment? Was that a bit? Was that was that a moment uh, where you thought I need to leave? Because uh, we all, we all felt it in the dressing room. If you don't yeah. come on, you're know, you're a star. Yeah, he, he, the, the guy explained it to me uh, that I did. I wasn't going to start. He told okay. he told me before. So yeah. I, I yeah okay I can understand because you know I think Louis played in the, the round in the other round yeah. and the guy explained it. Yeah, yeah. It's fine with me. And then we were quite a bit up. No. Yeah, I think we were winning we're, quite we're well. We were winning yeah. quite well, and I was yeah. He sent me out to warm up. And then he yeah, <laughs> didn't put me on. And, yeah. I sat down on the bench and then I, I, I said something to him in, on the bench. There. What did you say? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Hey, boss, you okay? Boss, you <laughs> Any okay? Any chance of a game? <laughs> yeah. Please let me in. Yeah. Oh, was it something angry, Something a bit angry? Something a bit... Yeah, that I wasn't going to come on. Oh, yeah. so you used like a bit of a snap? Yeah, a bit of a snap. 
that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time. Is that mm. a private word then? Well, did you feel after that going home that I mean, look, if you say something to a manager like that, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. Aren't you? you know that. I mean, it's it's that's how it works. It's, that's how it works. I would be the same. Would you be the same now as a, as a manager? Yeah. If someone said to you in your ear, what yeah. you said to? Yeah, no, just just uh, the the comment on a snap in that moment of a, of a final. Yeah, you, you cannot do it. But of course, it, it, emotions are there, and, yeah. and and you know, we were players too, and now as a manager, yeah. you you understand the emotions, but of course, it's it's a conversation. Yeah. It's, and it's and how did it, how did it end after that in terms of when was the moment where the boss pulled you and said, "Oh, you pulled"? How did it go? How did it work? Um, well, it was the so last. We, we never see this. No, we never no, see this no, as the it team. It was the, the last game. Uh, I remember Charlton at home. Was it probably okay. the last game of the season, where the win was needed to be in a Champions League? Okay. Yeah. I remember vaguely, yeah, yeah. and then he he pulled me aside and he said, "You're not in the squad today." And then I knew. Uh, was that in his office? Uh, no, it was in the hotel. He got me travelling. We, we were in a home game. We got into a hotel. Oh, okay, the, so Lowry. The Lowry yeah. Hotel. And I remember just waking up in the morning and then yeah, going towards the game. And I think he decided overnight that you weren't going to be in the squad. I were, but, but, yeah. And then he he said, "Okay, you, you you're not in the squad. Some uh, you, you'll be brought to Old Trafford and uh, get your car, and that's it." The end. That was the end. <laughs> that was the end. And I started pre-season, but I, but you knew that, that this was a. He, he, he knew he was moving on yeah. without me, and and he's putting. The future of the club in, in into other players, so that that was clear. But then I read a few years later, I don't know when it was, but specifically you text Sir Alex, yeah, and you said, "Do you remember me?" Is no, right? is that right? No, no, I text him. Can I call? Can I call you? Yeah, and then uh, he said yes, and I called him because I, you know, a year later uh, you reflect on things, and it was bugging me on a personal level. I shouldn't have said uh, this. Uh, at the time, in the cup final, in the mean? final, and uh, I apologise for that. And but the funny thing was uh, that I called him, and I, he was like, "Hello," and he's like, "Yeah, hey, Gaffa, yeah, it's Ruth here." Yeah, yeah. So I was, no, there's no chit chat. Oh no, he goes quiet no, on the phone. He, he he's just, like, yeah. "Okay, you you want to say something to me? Speak." Yeah, okay. It was that that man, and he was right. So I started to speak. Okay, the, and I felt the relationship we had. After the medical that failed yeah. and the relationship we built and through emotion in a personal level, maybe few things all together yeah. that made me be yeah react in that way that I don't feel it's me. Yeah. And and I, I felt to apologize for that. I felt that to do it to do it and he accepted it uh, directly. He said I'm very happy. I apologize, accept it. And from now on, you know, it's we are, we're off again. Yeah. So and then we kept we kept in touch, and then I feel that apology is worth it because yeah. the the relationship is is yeah. in, intact again, yeah. and it's for me it's important. But if a player did that to you now, how would you deal with them yeah. as a coach? I mean, would you have some sympathy because you've been there yourself, or would you actually no, deal with them in the same it's way? It's a conversation, so? and you gotta you gotta uh, you know I, I I would share what happened to me. To the player, yeah. Okay, if you, if you building up emotions and it all and it all, uh, and you snap in a certain moment where it's, yeah. it gets too much. You need to uh, you need to speak before. This is what I want. I don't care who you are. This yeah. is the way. I want to talk to you about Holland. Did you ever feel that you should have won the tournament? I thought 2008 the Euros. That was the one for us to win. Do you still think about these moments? Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying this episode. This is just a quick thank you to Skybet, our partners, for making this show happen. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Please subscribe, there's loads more episodes coming up and I hope you're enjoying it. So you leave Manchester United, and you go to one of the great football clubs in the world and you have Ronaldo, Robinho, you have obviously Bex, you have mm -hmm. all these great players. Tell me about that first impression when you go into that dressing room and how it differed from, from Manchester yeah. United. 
Yeah, it's different, but uh, also similar because there's so many good players there, and I had to adjust to to Spain, to the to the language, to uh, to the club, and to the Spanish league. But uh, yeah, I I was able to adapt pretty pretty fast, and I, I felt I had a point to prove. You know, leaving United, yeah. I was 30. Well, what's in it for for, for me, and, and and what can I still show? And yeah, we had a we had a great season, winning the league, and. Uh, yeah, looking back on a yeah. fantastic period there. What was it like under Capello? Because he's seen as a hard taskmaster. Yes, yeah. hard but clear. I loved it. You love Capello? I yeah. loved it. In that sense, he was similar to Sir Alex. Yeah. He was just, okay, this, this is what I want and can't, I don't care who you are, this yeah. is the way. And that's, for me, it's clear and he, he backed his decisions and he made his decisions and it, it got us uh, winning that league. And what did you see differently in the Spanish game to the game in England? Did you feel it was a higher quality tactically mm. and technically? I felt there was more, more football there. Yeah. Uh, so I was able as a, as a nine to, to drop a bit more into, yeah. into the midfield, to, to play a little bit more as, as I felt in England. I, yeah, to, get, to drop into midfield, you get into <laughs> battlefield. <laughs> You, 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 uh, you get killed. You got killed. <laughs> you got killed. You got tackled. You got slaughtered. Uh, and, and, and yeah, it's a different type, type of game. And I felt after five years, that was also part of me that one, wanted a new challenge. That I wanted also to. Yeah. Felt that I needed that as a, as a player, as a person to, to, to leave and, and try. And of course, the chance comes to go to Madrid yeah. and play in Spain. And I, I have to say, for me, it was it was it was a lovely lovely time. And I want to talk to you about Holland. How, how do you look back upon your Dutch career? Yeah, as, all together. How do, you, how been, do you view it? It's been a long time. I'm, I'm proud of that. Ninety-eight to two thousand and twelve. Yeah. So f to be able to be in the national team for fourteen years yeah. is a long big time. achievement. For yeah. me, is is a proud thing. Yeah. It says something about consistency level yeah. and that. But if you look at tournaments, that's disappointing in that sense because 98 I just missed, 2000 injured, 2002 not qualified, then four, six, and eight I was there. Yeah. And then 10 was my last one, but didn't get didn't get picked in the end. Yeah. And that was when they reached uh, the final. So 70 caps over these 12 to 14 years, yeah, missed a couple of injuries. So yeah, yeah it's a bit mixed, yeah. it's mixed. And when you look yeah. back at the tournaments, did you ever feel that you, could, you should have won a tournament? Yeah, we, I, I thought 2008, the Euros, when we, we had the games against Italy, 3-0, France 4-1 in the group yeah. stage, that, that was the, 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 the one, that was the one for us to win. Because it was with Robin, with, with, with Snyder, with Van Persie, with Van der Vaart, with, with Gio van Bronckhorst, yeah. we, we had this team to, to win it. And why didn't you win? What did you put it down oh, to? It's, it's, uh, it's hard to put. We had the quarter-final against Russia the, in, in 2008, we lost. Yeah, it was, it's, Do you still think about these moments? Yeah, still... yeah, yeah. Th those were defining moments. We were in, in an unbelievable form, beating Italy world champions, France. Yeah. We were just flying, and all of a sudden, that game, Russia, Russia, draw, uh, extra time, and losing the game in extra time, and it's like, how did this happen? And that's the biggest question many journalists ask: of what happened in that Russia game? And it's hard to explain. What happened? It's just one of these things in football, I think. Yeah, because I can never explain. Sometimes 2004 or 96, when we, I thought we should have won, yeah. torn. I can never explain how or why. You can never. You know, Sir Bobby, he was, he was my manager yeah. at PSV and he, he sometimes said, oh, football, you can't, some things you cannot explain in football. Were you influenced by a lot. Sir Bobby a lot? A lot. Talk to me about Sir Bobby. Yeah, I always get a smile when, yeah. when I talk about him. And he, I remember on this pitch actually when he, when he, he, was, a, he was my manager and uh, he, was, he was really special. As a person as well towards you as a player, you know? He could give you this advice and, and confidence and I was a young player here and his enthusiasm, his love for the game, his passion. 
uh, dealing with uh, disappointments and, 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 and his team talks, his, his, his sense of humour. <laughs> what was team talks like? Go on, no, tell it me. was fantastic. So sometimes after the game he got battered for one against a, a bad team and he just made he made you laugh and it's like motivate at the same time and, and, and okay there's more to it than football and uh, I don't know it's his yeah his, his spirit is just uh, it's, it's amazing to play for it was a true inspiration and uh, yeah and a great man above, above all when I played with you I don't think I would have looked at you and thought you'll be a head coach. I think my wife said after three months, Ruth, please get out of the bloody house. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the role have you found most difficult? Ruto, so we're looking over the pitches here at your training ground. And I want to ask you about your journey into coaching and management. When yeah. I played with you, I don't think I would have looked at you and thought yeah. you'll be a head coach. When did it first hit you that you wanted to be a coach? Um, I just, uh, you know, finished my career in Malaga, living in, in, in Spain, south of Spain, stayed there for the first year. Yeah. I was just, you know, not thinking about doing much. And then obviously, uh, I think my wife said after three months, Ruth, please get out of the bloody house. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you this much. I haven't. She didn't like your company, though. No? Don't, don't please interfere with this too much <laughs> with the family and, and, and this. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> Go and do something because it's not working. And now it's quite funny, actually. And um, I thought, OK, what, what, what am I going to do? And I spoke to, to Gus Henning. He said, Ruud, yeah, I'm with the national team and start your badges and come and, and, and see if you like it or not. I said, OK, well, I, uh, I start doing that. And you and did your badges in Holland? I did my badge in here when I started here, uh, I think it was 10 years ago, at the academy here with the under-17s and one, yeah. one day, two days, three days a week, and then only strikers, uh, individual training, and then little by little, I really started liking it. And I started, I felt like, okay, it's, it's something that can, uh, can suit me with, with my, my character, yeah. my personality. Yeah, let, let's, let's get on with it. You've not rushed either, have you? You've really sort no. of gone down yeah. the development path. Yeah, I, I also wanted to, to take time after 20 years of, of football. I really felt like, okay, the tunnel vision yeah. and traveling and playing and pressure and all that. I was like, okay, I want to take my time and I, I, I took yeah, 10 years, really growing into it slowly. Also spending lots of time with, at home with family and, and doing the, the, the uh, school holidays with the kids, go away, travel, do yeah. things, be there. And little by little you grow into it and uh, yeah, now it's full, now it's full time again, yeah, of course. When I look at the sort of some of the young English coaches, it seems that they want to get into the top position really quickly. Hmm. And when I look at the sort of Dutch players or the yeah. Dutch coaches, they seem to want to learn from the ground up. I, is that how yeah. you view it as well? I don't know. It, I think I needed it. I think it... it but yeah. does everybody not need it to learn the ropes, maybe, to, to yeah. learn the I think coaching? It, and yeah, maybe you could say so, but if, if you don't feel it, that you need it, and then you just, and you get the chance to start wherever, and you feel like doing it, of course, it's, it's different per individual, but I felt that I really needed to start at the bottom. At the bottom, you know, leading a group of kids and, and, and training them and, and see how you can help the individual, get them play as a team, you know, make those decisions on, on, on team behaviour, professionalism. Of course, related to a 16-year-old boy yeah. and a group of 16-year-old lads. And I think that's where you learn, you know, the, the trade a little bit. You make your mistakes there. You make your mistakes, you do your coaching during games during training sessions. So just talk to me about a few things that, you know, I, I was only a coach for four months at Valencia it, it, and it wasn't the right thing for me to do. But some of the things that I found difficult. So what about substitutions? I watch the game obviously on television, sorry, for television, yeah. and I'm up high yeah. and I can see the whole picture of the game. Was when you're on the touchline, it's very difficult to see mm. tactically sometimes the, mm. the depth and the perspective, and, you know, of, yeah. of the, of the, 
Do you, do you find that easy or do you find that difficult? Because I found it really tough in Valencia, the timing of substitutions. Yeah. I don't know. It's an, it's it's uh, I experience as it uh, as it being also an instinctive move. Okay. You feel it. In, you feel it. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, something. Okay, this is what the game needs. Uh, I don't know. It's it's sometimes it's that, and and you cannot explain. Okay, now this is what the game needs. What the team needs. Or sometimes as well with with the coaching staff behind you, yeah. and they have they have the tablet and they see it, they get the they get it. the feed and they yeah. say, hey, uh, Root, uh, this is, then it's more a rational thing, yeah, or a tactical change, so it's a combination of both sometimes. Do you draw an inspiration from anybody that you played under that you think that's how I want my teams to be? It's how I want. Yeah, well, I I, I notice an instinctive feeling that when I coach a team. I, I I like to see the the ball in in my team. <laughs> I <Yeah>. don't know. <laughs> I like it. when we have the ball. I'm like yes. Yeah. Come on. Now we can start playing. Now we can start uh, creating. And I feel that okay. I have a I have a feeling that okay. We have the ball, and I like us to prepare an attack. Yeah. You know, we play possession to to a certain moment where you gonna hurt the opponent. Yeah. You know, that's the reason to play possession. So in that sense, I'm I'm really looking for okay, this is the moment to speed up or to finish the attack or to go for goal instead of another pass of another pass, and that is, yeah, what I what I like about, uh, yeah, when I really start to tick on the sideline that that game. What part of the role have you found most difficult so far that you feel like <sighs> the, the, that, that that's that's quite tough, I, or I don't like that part, or there is a bit that the, the the most difficult thing is that. Dealing with uh, with results, I think as a as a as a manager as a coach, you feel responsible for the result. Yeah, you mean when, when you lose? When you lose, yeah. and it's like bloody hell, this is and the world's ended. Yeah, it's like the world. Yeah, ended. when when uh, when you learn quickly, and beginning of the season we got knocked out of the the playoffs for the Champions League against Rangers, and what you feel then as a manager, as a responsible, yeah, it's it's. Tough. It's it's a lot. Yeah. That's what I experienced, and I couldn't explain it. Like, but as a player, I never experienced in that volume because you feel the collective responsibility. The collective re responsibility for for the club, the fans, the players, the team, for everything. You have to explain it in the press, in the media, yeah. and it's like, whoa, this is a lot. And when you speak to other managers around you, they all like you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, you recognize it, and other others do as well. And they also say, yeah, but you learn quickly. Don't yeah. worry, and you do yeah. because the next time you think, okay, uh, this is what's happening, but it, 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 it's not only of me. Yeah. It's impossible, and if I keep doing that, drawing it to me, I'm not for this. I'm not for this job. How are you at home with the family after a defeat? It's also what you learn quickly. Yeah. So bring it in at home. It's not. It's not working. It's not working. So you try and separate. The yeah, two. you need to separate. It's and you can do that. Yeah, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. 100% <laughs> is is a lot, but uh, you really, I think it's better in the end if you do. Also for for being a better manager, better, better coach, you know, if you can just leave it for 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 some time being for for, for the next day. But obviously, in the in your head, it's always things are going on. And last two questions: you've lost Madueke and uh, Gakpo. Gakpo. Yeah. That was always in the plan, but that must be tough. It is tough. You're at a club that is a big club, one of the great yeah. clubs in Holland and Europe, yeah. Yeah. but you've lost two of your best players yeah. and you're only a few points off the top of the league. Mm. How yeah. do you cope with that? And do you yeah. feel a little bit sad that you know Dutch yeah. football has to lose players yeah, to English like football all the time? It's or right. yeah. It's also two academy players. I've been working with them on, on, on the other side and also here. So in, in, in it's double. In a way, you help a player fulfill their dreams and, and, and getting their dream moves, what they also yeah. already talk about when they're 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Wow, what it's like to play for United, what it's like to play for Madrid, what, what did you do, what is important. So when you're actually helping players in that sense, and when they make the move on a personal level, I'm proud as well, but I'm the manager. I want my best players here, I want my best players. Yeah. We have the mo most chance of success, but it's important to have the club behind me and we make the decision to go for this and, and, and communicate it also to the fans. That's what they need to know if the, if the, why are we doing things. 
And if they understand, of course, when we lose, they're not happy yeah. like me. But if they can have some sense of understanding and that yeah. we're building and working towards something, then, yeah, you know, you know it's, you're doing it for something. Yeah. You let Gakpo go to Liverpool, Rude. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, I did nothing. I, I, saw, I saw one of the worst quotes from me about that. Uh, oh, what was that? Gakpo got asked about it at something Liverpool United, but it was completely made up, fake, fake, <laughs> fake quote. But anyway, uh, no. And my final question relates from how, how has the transition been for you from being the most single-minded goal machine that I've ever seen to someone who now has to look after a dressing room, the media, the fans, the club, and the has club. to think about everybody. It's How has that transition been for it's you? A, it's a hell of a transition. <laughs> from, from very narrow <laughs> to, uh, to uh, very wide. If I don't score, yeah. the world has ended, to now you've got to think about everybody. You've got to think there. of everyone. And uh, I think, as I explained to you before, I got into this goal-scoring machine which maybe from a natural point of view, it wasn't really... It wasn't you. It was me, it <laughs> the way I handled my, my game at the time. But I think it, 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 uh, as a character, yeah. it, it wasn't a match in that sense. But it, you lived a life for 15 years, Rude. Yeah, I know, on the <laughs> pitch, on the pitch. And I think if you are an egoistic person off the pitch as well, you know, yeah. then... Uh, you, you, you cannot do this job. You know what I mean? As yeah. a character, as a, as a manager here, as a, someone in this position within a club, you need to be able to communicate. You need to be in, 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 in a good working relationship with the staff, with yeah. the players, with the fans, with the media, with the board. So as a character, I'm liking this. I'm liking this way more than the narrow narrow thing that I was living on the pitch for, for many years. And your ambition? Well, my, my ambition, I have to say that, that, it's, that it's here. At PSV? At PSV. It's my ambition. I cannot see anything else because th this is something that I really want to accomplish, you know, build on and get this club back, you know, at, at the highest level, you know, competing for, for trophies and, 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 and especially getting into the Champions League. Brilliant. Rude, great to Thank see you. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. All the best.